part one, imagination. This is the island of Gulaya. To the right is Dragon Island, where only women live who are able to tame their dragons. To the left is a big whirlwind called Het Boze Oog, where everybody who tells a lie is drawn into. Over the last couple of years, my now 12-year-old neighbor and I got very good at telling stories about imaginary places. We were the builders of new countries, new cities, new places. We invented everything. Until one day he hesitated. He said, I can't write uh, the spelling because he had to jot a, down, a word down next to a new drawn castle. And he said, I can do this. I'm not good at spelling. And I said, what do you mean? <coughs> I didn't see this coming. I said to him, never ever let your imagination be overruled <coughs> by how it should be. But something has changed. His free thinking disappeared. And in the back of his hand, head uh, was suddenly occupied by the rules of reality. I felt sad and powerless. I wanted to give him back the power of his imagination. But something had changed. From that moment on, I decided that imagination, language, idea development were going to be my field. That's what I'm passionate about. That's what I, that's what I like to give to people. So I'm an idea developer and writer, and I make my living imagining with all kinds of people and industries. Um, and artists, large corporations. I'm called in when there's a need for some kind of change. A library that was just a library that needs to evolve into a meeting place for the community. A business <coughs> district with a lot of vacant buildings that needs to be revived. I create conversation starters, meetups and interventions in cities to talk about why the current situation simply doesn't work anymore and how we can improve it for the future. And what I've learned from all these meetings and interactions with people is that speculative thinking is a great way to start. Which means that you create stories, imaginary stories, new stories, about possible futures to explore what could happen in the future? You describe the implications of a certain idea. For instance, what happens if Curaçao would have 30 libraries all over the island? What would happen? Um, what, you know, uh, what would happen for the children or the elderly? Or um, yeah, 30 libraries instead of one. That's a change. Um, but. Um, our imagination and ability to share our ideas and spread them like stories is what opens up new possibilities and we normally would not come up with. Now, Punda, the oldest part of Willemstad. It was my first, there, uh, my first time here. Take a look at this picture. What do you see? What what do you hear? What kind of stories are there? What kind of sounds are connected to this place? What does Punda mean to you? Do you feel engaged to it? And is it Punda part of your culture? Last Wednesday I hosted a meetup with eight participants to talk about the future of Punda. Because I've come to understand from them that Punda used to be a very lively place where young people met and interacted, where people went out eating and drinking and you know, enjoying, having a good time. But now I hear words like boring or lack of diversity or dead space. And I was very curious to hear what that was all about. So yeah, during the meeting, I heard all kinds of stories about Punda. But how can we change the current situation? We speculated about all kinds of ideas. A swimming <coughs> pool near Mirachi. Uh, one long street of a lot of restaurants next to each other. 
So one long street, imagine the smells. Uh, it really reflects the cultural diversity of Curaçao. It could be an icon in Punda. We also spoke about bike lanes that connect the whole area. That would be great. Then somebody mentioned that actually nobody lives in Punda. Apparently, 30,000 people used to live in Punda. How many people do you think in Punda live right now? Only 50. 50 people are living in Punda right now. It's amazing, I think. And this, by the way, is one of them. Sam, at 11 o'clock in the evening, he was the last man standing. It was raining, all the streets were empty, and he passed by. So, Sam, this is great. This is one of the 50, actually, who live in Punda. <laughs> and what about all the vacant buildings? Right now, the larger area of Punda has at least 58,000 square meters of empty space, which means that 27%, almost one third of all the buildings in Punda is currently unused. So let's elaborate on that and unleash your imagination. What would you like to see in Punda? Uh, probably uh, women, uh, mothers with their children, eating out, uh, young professionals opening up their laptops, and retired people uh, first take, a sip the f uh, take the first sip of their beer at the end of the day. You know, socializing, the buzz of socializing. In short, yeah, in short, uh, living is the catalyst that could change Bunda. Because now nobody lives there, so after 8 o'clock or even 7 o'clock, it's as somebody mentioned in the workshop and what I heard also, it's dead space. Which is not a great remark to make of a beautiful town like this. So living is the catalyst that could change Punda and it should be a mixture of families, business owners and you know, children who live there. And while brainstorming, we concluded that there are two scenarios. One scenario is that um, that the um, sorry yeah one scenario is that within twenty years' time, the buildings will devaluate, and uh, you know a landlord from abroad, a project developer, is going to redevelop the place and then it's not in the hands of Curaçao, maybe. And another uh, scenario is that uh, the landlord who own the spaces can redevelop Punda and make it a really lively place. But the good news is you can do something about this. On behalf of our Punda brainstorming team, we present to you a new project Life in Punda, where you can apply for space and um, yeah, you can look it up on social media, you can, uh, you can apply for space. Life in Punda will collect all your ideas if you need a space in Punda. So why is this made possible? Because one of the landlords is on board and he offers some space and there's space available and hopefully the other landlords will follow. So please submit your ideas to Life in Punda on social media, it's on Facebook. So I want to leave you with this. I see a lot of knowledge here. Connect all the dots, connect all the knowledge. I've learned from all the experiences I have that while speaking about the ideas that it's already starting. <laughs> so after tonight, invite friends to come over and speak about the ideas you all have. Because it always will lead to something. Thank you.